the bridegroom cometh, will you be ready? Church, I don't know about you, but like it says in verse 17, I want to join with them and say to the Lord, come, come Lord Jesus. Amen? Because if we look at what God's plan was for creation, and now you look at what we've done with God's plan with creation, I think we all agree that we made a mess up. I think we all can agree that we didn't and not doing what God wanted us to do when he blessed us and said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and then have dominion over it. I, I think we all can agree that we're not doing what we were supposed to do. And it was not because everybody desired to not fall in the will of God or do the will of God. It was because Adam and Eve sinned and the fall of man set everything in motion all the way till today. We're talking about chaos. We're talking about sickness. We're talking about backbiting. We're talking about uh, 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 trials and all the crazy stuff that's going on in our lives. It was not supposed to be like that. You all realize that God's plan was to put us Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, which is shelter of delight, and said, tend to it. Not work where you're, the sweat of your brow you know, is going to cause you to suffer and, and you have pain. Not where women are supposed to give birth in pain. It wasn't supposed to be that way. That was the result of living in a fallen world. And one of the things I want you to see, if you would just turn with me for just a moment, we're not alone in this. Romans chapter 8. We're not alone in our desire for God through Jesus. Come. Come, Lord Jesus. In chapter 8 of Romans, you'll pick up, we're going to pick up in verse 20. It says in Romans chapter 8, verse 20, for the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who, subje uh, su who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Y'all see this? Mm -hmm. Not only that, or, or verse 22, for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves eagerly awaiting or waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. See, creation itself, nature itself, is joining us because it's tired of going through the stuff that it shouldn't be going through because it was not supposed to be like this. So not only are we looking eagerly for the adoption, for the redemption, we're not only are we looking for Jesus to come and break the skies and bring us to himself and transform this world to what he created it to be, the new Jerusalem and the new heaven, not only are we looking for God to come and take away all the pain, the sickness, the chaos, the trials, the troubles. Not only are we like that, but creation is saying the same thing. Come, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. See, when you think about it, because of our eager desire. And, and, and I, I've, I've talked to folks that have said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that day when Jesus cracks the sky, but not now. Why not not now? Do you realize the whole plan of salvation is to restore God's plan to where we are with him, we can see him, we can glorify him, we can not only be with him, but be with all those who are brothers and sisters in Christ. All the host of heaven that we can't yet see 
that we will see one day. At some point, God is coming back, church. Y'all do realize. Because he says, behold, I'm coming, and I'm coming when? Quickly. Amen? One of the things that we look forward to is when he comes, we're looking like, Lord, receive us. Redeem us. Reward us. He says it. I'm on the wrong page, but if you go back to Revelation, he says, Behold, I am coming, verse 12 of chapter 22. Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. So we're not only going to be received by the Lord, we're going to be redeemed by the Lord, but he also is going to reward us according to our faith, according to our endurance, according to our trust in him. This is what God will bless us for because we truly believe, we truly trust, and we truly honor him, and we're looking to serve him and bless him. Amen? So now, as we look to the, the scripture, before we go there, let me share something with you about Revelation. Amen? Listen to this. This is an overview of the book of Revelation. It says this. Just as Genesis is the book of beginnings, Revelation is the book of consummation. Now I want you to keep that, mind, that word in mind because we're going to touch on that later on. Consummation. Consummation. You'll C-O-N-S-U-M-M-A-T-I-O-N. Revelation is the book of consummation. In it, the divine program of redemption is brought to fruition. And the holy name of God is vindicated before all creation. Although there are numerous prophecies in the Gospels and epistles, which are letters, Revelation is the only New Testament book that focuses primarily on prophetic events. Its title means unveiling or disclosure. Thus, the book is an unveiling of the character and program of God. Penned by John during his exile on the island of Patmos, Revelation centers around visions and symbols of the resurrected Christ, who alone has authority to judge the earth, to remake it, and to rule in its righteousness, in it righteousness. Jesus has the right to rule it, right? To remake it, right? And to judge the earth in righteousness. Jesus is going to transform this world when he breaks the heavens. Amen? Jesus, when we are redeemed, we're not going to be caught up in all the craziness of the end times where suffering and all the uh, chaos is going to take even worse than what is going on now. We're going to be caught up together to meet him in the sky, those who are his. Amen? But when he comes, his whole idea of, or his whole plan is when this end time is over, there's going to be a new heaven, a new Jerusalem, and a new earth. Amen? And so one of the things I want you to see is that when we look at this word consummation, here's the definition of this word. Completion. Amen? Accomplishment. The act of complete I'm oh, sorry, the act that completes a long and passionate seduction and courtship. Or slash courtship. I'm going to say it again. Consummation means completion, accomplishment, and then here's the longer one. The act that completes a long and passionate seduction and courtship. If you don't have it, you just check with me at the end of the service and we'll give it to you again. Amen? But that word is going to be key in what we're looking at today. Because when you think about consummation in the world, we're talking about a man and a woman who becomes married and they consummate their marriage. How do they do it? 
because they end up going from it. I'm glad there's no children here at the moment, amen. But they go through a long, uh, uh, I was going to say courtship, but uh, engagement, amen. Some of them are long, some of them might not be that long. But most of the time, it's, it's a little time uh, between the proposal and the marriage ceremony. And during that time, there's courtship. During that time, you know, there are googly eyes and, and, and a lot of uh, uh, desire, but they're holding back. Amen? Because they're going to consummate, they're going to complete the marriage or, or the, the act of the engagement when they finally get married. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But I want you to know that the bridegroom is coming. And the question is, will you be ready? So these are the two areas we're going to look at today in part one of this message. Number one, Jesus is the bridegroom. And he's coming back. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But number one is, Jesus is the bridegroom. And he's coming back. Number two, will you be ready? We're the bride. Jesus is the bridegroom, we are the bride. The church, the body of Christ, is the bride of Christ. Jesus is the bridegroom. Amen? He says, in my Father's house, John 14, 2 and 3, in my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, he says what? I will come again. I'm coming back. We need to know that Jesus not only is he the bridegroom, but he's coming back for his bride. Amen? Now, interesting about a bride and a wife is different. A husband and a groom is different. Jesus is coming back for the bride that will become his wife. Y'all follow me so far? During the time that he's waiting where he is now, we're just the bride. We're not, we're not the wife. He's not called the husband yet. Amen? And the reason that that is is because it has not been consummated. The completeness, the act that has been longevity of the courtship and the engagement and the wooing. Remember the, 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 the definition? The act of a long and passionate seduction and courtship. This whole time when you gave your life to Christ, what God is doing is wooing you. He's showing you he is God. He's showing you that I will look after you. He's showing you that there is no other like me that will love you the way I can love you. There's a, no friend that is closer, that sticks closer than a, there, there's a, there's no brother that sticks closer, I'm saying it wrong. There's a friend that sticks closer to any brother than, than any brother, than any brother, excuse me. Jesus is showing us that he is the real deal. And what he wants to do is woo us so that we stay in line. See, think about it. When I say stay in line, I'm talking about that we don't give up hope on salvation. We don't turn when he has an issue or when we have issues and trials and, and give up believing. No, no. God shows us little glimpses every so often. Look at me. And that, that those little glimpses are enough for you to go, wow. And you're amazed or you're you know, encouraged to keep on keeping on. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. Y'all know that song, right? Amen? What I'm saying is that he is the bridegroom. And he's coming back. The second thing was we said, we, will we be ready? Amen? In Revelation chapter 22, in verses 11 and 14, look at what he says. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he who is holy, let him be holy still. Let me go any, let me, before I go any further, let me stop right there. What he's saying is that, remember, the time is near. I'm coming back. I'm coming back quickly. We don't know when that happens. But when I come back, if you're unjust, stay unjust. It's too late. If you are, uh, 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 what's the other one? If you are filthy, stay filthy. It's too late. If you're holy, stay holy. 
If you're righteous, stay righteous. Because when I come back, wherever you are, that's where you'll be. You can't change from unfilthiness or unrighteousness to all of a sudden, I want to get it right now. Too late. And if I was to ask you a question, and the question is this, if, hypothetically, if you knew Jesus would be back today at 5 o'clock this evening, wouldn't it change your whole day? Yeah. It would change your whole day. I mean, I know we got some plans for what we want to do today, but if you knew without a shadow of a doubt, 5 o'clock today, Jesus will be back, and there's no more changing after that time, wouldn't you change the way you think, the way you act? I believe, I, this is just me, I believe I would be on the phone calling my folks, telling them, look, are you saved? Are you, look, <laughs> are you saved or do you think you're saved? <laughs> She's laughing because we talked about that. Because what that question does is put it to us like this. It's regarding your salvation, what it produces. Because if you're saved, your mind is transformed. You've been converted. You don't think the same way. You don't act the same way. You don't do the same things. Yes, we still stumble. Yes, we still make mistakes. But our intention is to glorify God every area of our lives. From the moment we wake up in the morning to the moment we go to bed at night. We, we, our, our, our hope is to, or, or our, our, our focus is to give God praise throughout the day. Right now, a lot of people believe we have time. But what did he say here? Verse 12. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. That means there is something that we should be doing while we're waiting for the Lord to come. And we should live today as if it is today because we don't know when he's coming. But we do know this. Verse uh, 10 says, and he said to me, do not seal the words of, this, of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand. Now this was written thousands of years ago. Amen? So how close are we? A day is a thousand years, a day is as a thousand years in God's eyes. And a thousand years is as a day. We don't really know the timeline on when Jesus is coming back. But we do know thousands of years have passed since he wrote this, the Gospel of John uh, on the island of Patmos. And he says, do not seal this book up. See, Daniel, when God was giving him the prophetic word about this, he told Daniel, seal the book up, for the time is not yet. In Revelation, John comes along and God tells, through an angel, God tells uh, John, do not seal this book, for the time is at hand. The bridegroom is coming. Will we be ready for him? Because our mindset has got to be, it can happen any day now. And part two, we'll get into that a little bit more. But right now, we just want to talk about getting ready for the Lord. Amen? Amen. Look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 24. Ephesians chapter 5. Beginning in verse 24, I should say. Now, of course, we know that this is about... Uh, well, it's not only about, but it talks about marriage. Amen? Amen? Chapter 5, but my subtitle says marriage, and then it's got a hyphen, and then it says Christ and the church. And the reason that that's there the way it is is because God wants us to show us the analogy between a marriage on earth and how a marriage is in heaven, or uh, uh, spiritually is done, or should be done. So in verse 24 of chapter 5, it says, Therefore, just as the church is subject, uh, subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. We use this all the time in uh, marriage counseling, right? Because it's like, in everything? Really? But then we turn around and say, But the husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. 
and that puts the, the, the bigger the bigger responsibility on the husband. Because the husband, if he loves the wife like Christ loved the church, his bride, the wife will submit in everything. Because he will have shown him that, the husband I'm saying, that I am all about blessing you. I am all about helping you. I am all about uh, 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 tending to you, building you up. Supplying whatever need that you have. I'm all about you. And when the wife sees that, she knows that the husband is not going to do anything that she, or ask her to do anything for her to submit to that will be outside of the will of God. That's why he says, as unto the Lord. Husband loves your wife, uh, verse 25. Husband love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. And we know what that was. But here's the key verses. That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water, a water by the word. The word of God. Sanctify means set apart. So he says, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. That he, now he's talking about himself, Jesus, right? Might sanctify and cleanse her, the bride, us, with the washing of the war, of water by the word. That why? That he might present her to himself. Y'all see it? This is Jesus trying to prepare us to get the bride. I'm all about my bride. This is what Jesus said. I'm all about taking care of her. I'm all about her getting her prepped, getting her ready, so that on that great and wonderful day, when I come back, she's going to be without spot, without blemish. She will be holy. She will be perfect, which means complete. He says that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. That's where we want to stop right there. What we're looking at when we're talking about are you saved or do you think you're saved? We're talking about fruit bearing. We're talking about things that have to happen. That as God is working in us and through us, one of the indications that you are truly converted is you will bear fruit. John says it. I chose you. You didn't choose me. I appointed you to bear fruit. And he says, and that your fruit will remain. You will produce fruit. So the key is, God is preparing his bride, us, the, the church, to be without spot, no blemish, or any unholy thing. And he did it when he put the right robe of righteousness upon us. When he clothed us, he took his robe off, and when we got saved, he put it on us. And now we're clothed in white garments, pure perfect in his eyes. He says, now, if you are truly saved, or do you think you're saved, but if you're truly saved, now go produce and prepare for that great and wonderful day. Amen? So here's the thing. When we look at the difference between a bridegroom and a husband, you all know this. A bridegroom is before you get married. After they're married, they don't call him a groom. <laughs> they don't call him a bride. They call him a husband. Same thing with the wife. You, before you get married, you're a bride. But as soon as you get married, as soon as you have consummate, as soon as you have completed the, the long time of the courtship, and you're standing before the altar, and you and the, uh, uh, your groom is standing there, and, and, and you give your vows, and you say, I pronounce you husband and wife, and you seal the deal, you've consummated the wedding. Then the next step is the intimacy. Now we go, that's what I said, kids ain't here, okay, amen. Now you move to the consummation of intimacy. A man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife, and that which was separate shall become one. Consummation. Jesus is coming back, and until he comes back, we're the bride, he's the groom. 
But one day, he will be the husband and we will be the wife. Y'all with me so far? So let's get ready for his, let's get ready for our marriage. Amen? Okay, let's look at our lesson. As he comes, let's ready ourselves as his bride. Number one, let's accept the truth of his coming. Because one of the things that you heard me say earlier is that we believe it, but we believe it generally. And what I mean by that is, we're not, most of us are not thinking he's coming today. You, see, you, you follow what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. if we did, <laughs> it would change how we do things. It would change how we want to talk to people. We would change how we ourselves want to make sure we got our house in order. Our, our soul is right before the Lord. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So let's accept his words that, that which is the truth of his coming. First, uh, uh, we just read verse 10 of chapter 22. Do not seal the words of the, of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Amen? If you look at Revelation chapter 1, and verse 7 and 8, I believe it is, it says here, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all tribes of the earth will mourn because of him, even so. Amen. But look, these are the words of Jesus. I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, the beginning and the end, the, says the Lord, who is and who was and what? And who is to come, the Almighty. God says, understand, I'm coming back. Receive this. Accept this. Ready yourselves for it. Prepare for it. Verse 12 of chapter 22. It says here, we already read verse 10, verse 12, and Jesus says again, these are his words, and behold, I am coming quickly. I'm going to stop right there. If you go down to verse um, 20, he who testifies to these things says, surely, surely I am coming quickly. He didn't just say, I'm coming. Every time you see Jesus talking, he says, behold, I'm coming quickly. I'm coming. We read that John, when he was writing just now, and he said, uh, the time is at hand. We don't know when that is, but what he wants us to know and prepare for is that he's coming, and it's a lot sooner than it was when he wrote this book. Y'all follow me? However long it's going to take him, or whenever he breaks the skies, it's a lot closer today than it was thousands of years ago. And the thing that we need to know and being prepared is believe that if he said it this many times, and there's more that I could have gone through, but I just stopped right there. But he says many times, I'm coming quickly. Not just I'm coming. I'm coming quickly. Which is where we're going to pick up next week. Next week the message is, ready or not, here he comes. Still the same title, the bridegroom cometh, but then it's going to be ready or not, here he comes. And we'll look at that next week, amen? So live as though it's today, every day. When you wake up, we should give God praise for the fact that we're in our right minds and that we don't know that today, Lord, is this the day that you're coming back. And if so, am I ready? Show me, Lord God, is there something I need to do or something I need to surrender to you to purge me? Because I want you to receive me, I want you to redeem me, and I want my reward, whatever that is. Number two, join the host of heaven and rejoice, church, at his coming. Look at chapter 19, just a page back. We're going to pick up verses 1 and 8. But look at this. He says, verse 1, After these things I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Alleluia! 
Salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. Again they said, Hallelujah! Y'all hear that? Then a voice came from the throne saying, they're not done yet praising God. Praise our God, all you, his servants, and those who fear him, both small and great. And then he goes on. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thundering, saying what? Hallelujah! For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Y'all see this? Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. And what? His wife has made herself ready. Consummation. It has come. This is prophetic, remember. But they're, they're talking about it as if it's happening right now. They're shouting right now because they believe what is about to happen is coming. And what I'm saying is that let us join the host of heaven and praise God for his coming. Amen? Come on now. I don't know about you, but I rejoice in the fact that God is coming one day. And before he gets here, I'm going to praise him before he gets here. I'm going to praise him because I believe that when he comes, he's coming for me. I mean, I hope he's coming for you all. I pray you all are saved. I pray only God knows your heart. Amen? That's why we're never to judge. We're not to judge the one that looks like they're not saved. That might be the one saved. <laughs> y'all follow me? Right. Those might be the one that's born before us. Well, yeah. I'm, you know, for y'all, I got to speak for myself because I know in whom I believe. Amen? Amen? But I'm saying this is why we praise him. God deserves, he put us in the right place, right? Right where he wants us. He's already clothed us with the robe of righteousness. We are already ready for him. The things about the rewards is what we do with what he's given us, salvation. Once he gave you salvation, now he says, what are you going to do with it? That's where you bear fruit. That's where your, work, your works come into play. That's where, you know, the rewards come. But to be ready to be received as his bride in an all-white garment like a bride on your, uh, in the natural that is standing before the altar in a regular church, normally they have a white, all-white garment. And the groom is standing there, cheesing, looking at his bride, his beloved coming to him. Whew. I'm telling you, it is an awesome, awesome time to realize our God is worthy of praise right now. He who is filthy, let him stay filthy. He who is unjust, let him stay unjust. He who is holy, let him stay holy. He who is righteous, let him stay righteous. He who praise God right now, let him continue praising God when he comes. Y'all follow me? All right, number three and lastly, let's consummate this marriage. Amen? Amen? Let's consummate this marriage. Turn with me to Revelation. Oh, we're already here. Revelation, uh, oh no, yeah, back to 22. And it's one verse. It's just simply one verse. But that one verse says a lot. Verse 17, it says this. In the spirit capital S, if, you, if you're in the King, New King James Version, and the bride say, come. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the bride, the church, the body of Christ, are saying, come, Lord Jesus. Let's consummate this marriage. Let's complete what you've already started at the beginning of before the foundation of the world when you saved us and had a plan of salvation but couldn't really bring it all the way through and redeem us until you come back. That's why the Bible tells us the Holy Spirit, God has given us the Holy Spirit to seal us until 
the day of redemption as a guarantee of our salvation. We're not redeemed until he comes back. But the, but the Bible says that God has blessed us and sealed us as a guarantee of what's to come. Right? Y'all follow me? And so here the scripture is saying, the spirit and the bride say come. And let him who hears say come. And let him who thirsts come. But I want to focus on that first part. The spirit, the Holy Spirit and us are declaring and are appealing to God, come, come, right now, come Lord Jesus, right now, join and let's consummate this marriage, because this will be the completion of salvation, of the marriage ceremony. This is when it all happens. This is when we will see him face to face. Amen? And this is where we want to lift up our voices and join in with the Holy Spirit and say, Lord Jesus, come. Because you know what? I know we think about, and, and, and this one young brother I was talking to that I was telling you all that said, uh, you know, I want him to come, but I want him to come right now. And the reason he said that is not that he's not really looking forward to that, but he's putting a lot more on his family. Like, I want to see my daughter grow up and graduate. I want to see, you know, the things that we do in life happen. But you know, between the time your daughter grow up and graduate, you know how much chaos could happen? You know how much trials could happen? You know how much pain your daughter could suffer? Do you, know, you, know, you don't see that because you're not God. What you should be looking at is even if God came back today, your daughter's fine. Your daughter's going to be blessed. You're going to both enter into, if you're saved, you're both going to enter into heaven. I'm not talking about the child because children, you know, before they get to that age, they all go to heaven. But I'm talking about the adults or the ones that know and then that either rejected them or received them. If they received them, don't you know that that is the best blessing ever? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and your children and your wife and, and husband and, you know, all the people, amen, what you should be thinking about is, are they saved? Because you can have a great uh, uh, family and, and everything's going well. But if they're not saved, what good was that? If your children who are, are of, of, of above age, and know and have heard and just haven't received them. But yet, you love them and you're blessing them and they're doing well and all those things. What good is that if they don't get into heaven? It's no good. Because the biggest gift that you can give your child is the knowledge and the understanding of who God is and the mercy and the love and the grace that he bestows on all of his people who are willing to accept it. It's a free gift that God says, if you just take it, I'll receive it back. But it's the gift that puts you in the right place forever, eternally. Amen? Amen. So the message today, this is it. Number one, accept the truth of his coming. Number two, join the host of heaven and rejoice. Amen? At his coming. Amen. And number three, let's consummate this marriage. Bring it to completion. Our part. He's done his part. Now it's just a matter of us, matter, the bridegroom coming. Will you be ready? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray.